how to paint an engine bay, man. It's your boy Bezo with wheels. If y'all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, man. We got this, uh, <laughs> I was about to say suburban for some reason. We got the Mustang right here. 70, 1970s Mustang. We about to go ahead and spray the engine bay. We already primed it. It's pretty much, it's, it's kind of straightforward. All right, well, before you even thinking about getting it painted, you got to make sure you prep it. Got to take it outside, power wash it, use some Dawn soap, use some degreaser to get all that dirt, dust, and debris that you might have in your engine bay. Get it all cleaned out. Once you do that, take it outside, let it dry for a day. Then you're going to sand it. If you're fortunate enough with a sandblaster, then heck yeah, use your sandblaster. But if you don't, use some 320 grit. After you 320 it, prime it. After you prime it, hit it with some scotch bright or some 600 grit. And then go ahead and just paint it at the color you desire. Other than that, we had to use a sandblaster because of this right here. We was a rust. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a lot. It was a lot of rust everywhere. And that sandblaster came in handy. That's what we handled it with. So we primed it really good. And shoot, did our part, prepped it up really good. And now it's ready to paint. So let's go ahead and get it. Um, Mask, whatever you don't want, overspray on up. All right, that's the whole car. Um, you'll be surprised on how good an engine bay, uh, how, how much of a difference the car turns out with the engine bay being painted as well. A lot of shops don't do it. Some shops do. I do. Uh, you can lead a motor in. You can take the motor out. We going we got two examples. We got this one has the motor in, and then we'll show y'all the one that got the motor out. This one right here has the motor out. Uh, so, which is definitely, definitely doable. I love it when the motor is already out. I can climb in there and get all the angles that I need to get. So this one's going black. We're going 8555 Ebony Black. First thing you want to do is really cover up and mask to the T. That overspray is not your friend. So all these wires, preferably you want to snatch them out. Um, I think we'll, we'll try to we'll try to tuck and pull and remove. I'll call the driver, ask him, <laughs> driver. I'll call the customer and ask him if he want if he's planning on getting a new AC box. Um, it looks like he's gonna have to, and I will go ahead and get it replaced. But I'm gonna call him to make sure. If so, we're gonna go ahead and remove it. That way we get a cleaner. Uh, look to it now these wire harnesses that would allow me to actually probably pull the rest of the wire harnesses through the firewall that way we get a clean spray everything else will mask up certain things will mask up like um i like to go ahead and mask up these right here these lines these line connectors that any threads any harnesses any wiring that could potentially uh you know ruin ruin the value or ruin ah uh, excuse me my back ruin uh, the electronics or anything like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and take a look at this engine bay we got over here. <sighs> yes, uh, take a look at this one right here. This one's going orange. So we're gonna go ahead and jump on this one first. We'll spray it. This one's ready to be sprayed. Um, this is sealer. So we'll spray the orange base. We're gonna be doing a tri-coat. So we'll cut our fans on here in a minute. We're gonna be using finish one clear coat and then we're gonna be using some slow. I don't have, I do not have um, the medium reducer. I have slow, so things is going a lot slower. If it's real cool outside, you wanna do fast. Uh, fast reducer and fast hardener. If it's slow, if it's hot outside, it's really hot, you wanna do slow. If it's like 90s, you want to do some slow medium is like in the seventies. Um, but yeah, right now I don't have anything slow. I mean, I don't have anything fast. It's been so hot lately. I've been grabbing, I've been grabbing slow. Um, but I loaded up on some mediums. They didn't have any, this is slow. Definitely don't want to use that. It will dry extremely slow using medium when it's cool outside. Cause I'm, I'm fighting that. I'm like, damn, this car is still tacky. We sealed it. We primed it, we sealed it, and now we're getting ready to go ahead and lay some base. We got the tri-coat. Tri-coat means you pretty much got three layers to do to get your outcome. So we got a, we got the color and we got the pearl and then we'll clear it. That makes it the tri-coat. So let's get started. All right, mixing paint, man. Um, fairly simple. 
Um, it don't gotta be that. You, a lot of people make it complicated. You don't gotta be mixing cups. Dang, I ain't got no small one. Anyways, um, ah, <laughs> I already got one. But anyway, look, 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 look. Four to one. A lot of your base coats, a lot of uh, most base coats be one to one or two to one. Um, the difference is like the percentage of the hide ratio ratio meaning like how well do you want it to hide on your first pass so if i'm spraying this piece of paper black i spray it one to one is probably going to show show some white two to one is the thicker is thicker is less is less reducer it's like half and half of the paint so basically look 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 we're going to do we're going to do one to one one to one you can kind of it stretches your paint um, if I did two to one, uh, it'd be thicker. It'd be more uh, darker. One to one is like basically um, to cover it, you'll hit, have to hit it two or three times. But if you do two to one, you could get away with one pass. But I would recommend to do two passes on whatever you do. So, um, nope, not paying attention to none of this, none of that right there. Uh, whoa, hold on. Hold on. That's weird. I don't have no other cup. Yeah, so certain cups. Yeah, certain cups have different um have different ratios. Damn. I was really wanting this cup right here. You see how it's just straight up one to one and then two to one and then three to one and then four to one. Um I don't have no more cups. These cups make it a little more complicated. So uh damn. Nah, I'm going to have to work with y'all. Hold on. Let me see if I can figure out what we can use. Uh, damn. Is it that serious? Is it that serious? Anyway, I guess it's not that serious. Anyway, so now I got to do... If we was to do one-to-one... -one, that's weird. Here we go. Here go two-to-one. Why, why is one-to-one -one so much more complicated? So if I did one to one, I literally have to go pour my base all the way up here and then scoot way over here for my one to one. So I'd be paying attention to this one right here and then this one over here. Um, and normally this cup would be, they'd be next to each other like this. And then your percentages is after. You don't, that I don't, I don't even know how to, I don't even understand the percentages, honestly. I just stick to my basic one to one and two to one. So in this case, we're gonna do, we'll focus on the, ah, let's just do, let's do one-on-one -on -one, cause we ain't got that much paint. We'll do about two to three. Boom, two to three. And then to, to you know, like I said, to do the one-to-one, -one, we'll come over here, all the way over here. You'll skip all that 10%, 15%, 20%, 25. Um, I bet it's common sense. I don't have the time to figure it out. So right now, we need enough for our engine bay. Paint normally doubles when you add the reducer. So, uh, yeah. We'll go to thi this three. We'll go all the way over to this three. That's one to one. If we were doing two to one, we'll go to our two to one column and point it for our uh, paint first to that three. And then we'll go to the next column and go to this three. You see, you see the difference? You see the difference in the reducer that I'm pouring? So I'm starting from this three, and then I'm going to that three with the reducer. With this one, I'm starting from this three, and I'm going all the way up to that three with the reducer. So in this case, we'll just do the one-to-one. -one. Let's save it. I need to stretch it. So it's way more reducer than I will be pouring in the two-to-one column. So if you want to save paint and stretch it as best as you can, use one-to-one. -one. But if you like, you got enough paint, you know you're gonna get the job done, but you really want it to cover really good, use two-to-one. It's just thicker. Give it a little swirl. I will use my paint sticks over there, but I ain't worried about it because what we'll do is just throw it right in here and just shake it up. But when you shake it, I mean, when you, when you pour, if you don't use a stir stick, Look, that's all pure paint at the bottom. So let's just let that, let that kind of sit. Let that kind of shimmer down in there. Um, now, I would love to use my base coat gun. My bad, my bad, my bad. I love to use my base coat gun, but 
I, I've been using that as my primary gun. Highly don't recommend to use any type of $800, $700 gun as a primary gun. This is my clear coat gun. I got a 1.3 tip. The primer one, well, my DV1 base coat gun has a 1.4 tip. It's, oh, it's, it's bigger. Um, yeah, I can spray a little bit of flake out of there. Um, not flake, but a lot more pearls out of there. Flake, if you spray flake through that, it'll jam. It'll get clogged up. Trust me, I know. Um, all right, we should be good. We should be good. Get our liners. That's why I keep my liners. Boom. Man, I used to buy these individually. Whew. Yeah, I bet painters, I can't be the only painter that be frustrated when they, when they get the leak in or frustrated when you don't have any or you run out. Um, that's why it's good to be prepared, man. We got two boxes over here. I've never had two boxes of liners, so we in the game. So let's get it, man. It's time to spray. Got our paint loaded up. We shake it up really good. Um, eventually, I'll get this area blocked off, but these fans pull so good and so crazy. I really don't even have to mask up the rest of the car. I really don't have to mask up or cover up anything. Um, it's pulling great. And then we're only doing the engine base, so... By the time the paint even lift up, it's just going straight out. So let's go ahead and load up, man. Let's get it. I mean, let's go ahead and uh, jump on it. go ahead and talk about gun settings this is not the typical setting that i would have when i'm spraying a panel or a door or anything like that um this is a situation where you know you got to really know and learn how to play with your gun you got to master your gun you got to know your gun this situation um, i'm gonna be adjusting my fan mainly and then sometimes my fluid i'll be adjusting my fan just like you see so that i can get behind those hoses behind pipes or anything like that the firewall is pretty tough to get to um, if you don't know exactly what you're doing but adjust your fluid mainly your fluid will prevent you from running your fluid will prevent you from having pigment sags or anything like that and uh your fan will actually keep you from wasting paint and it's a direct hit it's like zooming in hitting it and then i'll zoom out whenever i'm on a flat surface so be mindful of what you're spraying, how you're spraying and how far it is. You dial your gun in for those uncomfortable, uncomfortable situ you know, situations and positions. So I'll be adjusting it back because I know I'm getting ready to spray, spray a flat surface like such the side of the wall. So I no longer have that airbrush effect. I dial it all the way back out again. Um, my fluid is the same, but I know if I get in a tight spot, I'll, I'll dial it back in. And be mindful, do not forget to adjust your gun. I've done that multiple times where I've dialed it all the way in so I can hit the back of that firewall and then I'm hitting the panel. And now I have a super wet streak across my front, you know, the fender. So yeah, be mindful of that. Got two coats on there. I think we're gonna uh, uh, go ahead and aim for one more coat. Um, it's a little wetter than I was wanting it to be. <laughs> all right. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways my bad insider but uh yeah man it came out pretty damn good we're gonna we're gonna let it it's so cool man it's crazy because i was begging for it to be hot i mean i was complaining about it being so hot and just like just sweating all the time in here and just complaining and was, man it's too hot it's hot but i was still in here grinding and now it's cool and now it's, it's working against me it's too cool in here i don't have a fast reducer or fast hardener or any of that and now i'm like i mean even when you lay it down you gotta you gotta use way less fluid you gotta know what you're doing man that's the thing when you take your car to a shop you you gotta you want to know that your painter or your body tech is knowing what they're doing and it feel good to know that i know what i'm doing um, because like I said, I could have hit it one hard time and it just sagged and ran and been too wet and too, you know, too wet on the first coat, uh, with the base, um, got a little dry shot right here. I got to hit that. Um, but we're going to let it tack, man, just cause it's so cool. It's gotta be like 68 
or 70, somewhere around there. Mind you, it's been, it's been like 105 the past few weeks, man. It's just been, yeah, it's just been crazy hot out here in Oklahoma City. still in the midst of getting prepped up everything didn't go as smooth as we wanted to but my guy is back my boy tell him where you've been <laughs> st louis st louis boy you got family out there you moved out there for a little bit yeah you know did his thing man hey look i'm not gonna lie it's an honor to have brody back because my boy be over here on his phone all the goddamn <laughs> no i'm just playing i'm just messing with you bro you do be on the phone but but anyways um but yeah man he back at it so it feel good have him back on the team, man. Um, and it's crazy because I called him. I was like, man, we're we gonna have to make some shake, man. We gotta get you back. He ended up coming back for your boy. So right now, um, my brother been doing the body work on this. This had a lot of dents and dings in it. Now, don't be, how, I'm gonna tell you how we move. Don't be um, alarmed with the amount of Bondo that you see. The question is, how thick is it? It ain't thick over here, man. We pull it as much as we can with the stud gun and then we wipe it. Now, if it's a lot of dents and dings all in one area, then yeah, the whole area gonna have to be wiped. So look at look at the boy Bondo station, look at the bodywork area station, you feel me? So uh, mainly be using them blocks. So we, 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 we do the blocks, ain't nothing better than them blocks. So he's getting the engine bay prepped up for us. All right, man, so real quick to sum it all up, the basics of painting of engine bay is strictly just masking up man just covering up everything that you don't want paint on um and and listen to me when i say that that overspray is crazy the overspray will climb all into zigzag and all into spots that you don't want it to be so you got to be mindful of that take your time when it comes to masking um man if you can get some foil foil is your best friend as a matter of fact uh when i was painting airplanes we used to have to paint inside the landing gear and it was just pipes and wires and cables and all type of stuff we had to mask up. And it would have been ridiculous to just use tape just because the amount of, um, you know, copper and wiring and stuff like that there was. Um, in this case, it wasn't too, too much. But um, yeah, foil, you can just grab it, grab it, grab it, pinch, pinch, pinch. And then by the time you unfold, un, you know, unwrapped it with, from the foil, taking that foil off, man, you had a good solid, you know, masking job. So take your time on it. Um, it just depends on how good you wanna want the outcome to be. So this one, I wanted it really good. So I went ahead, took the time out and just masked it with the tape, covered up everything. And then uh, we shot it. Of course, we still gotta clear everything, but I, I gotta do some pinstripes. Um, I gotta do a few extra accessories um, that'll be going on the motor. So, yeah man uh we'll put the clear on later down uh later down the line hit the subscribe button if y'all haven't already um so y'all can stay updated with the the process of these vehicles so 
um, we'll hop on the other, we'll hop on another engine bay. I'll pretty much get into the specifics on that one when we do that one since the motor is out. But everything is just kind of straightforward, self-explanatory, cover everything up, cover the car up, sand it as best you can. I hit it with some 320 grit, nothing too crazy. Crazy. This had been sanded before. I've seen previous runs and, and just rough areas and smooth areas and stuff like that. So yeah, man, if y'all got any questions or comments, man, feel free to tap in with me, man. We having fun on the daily. We perfecting our craft. So y'all stay tuned. Um, be looking out for the next video. We'll be dropping that pretty soon. We out of here.